When it comes to joinery, there are a few joints more commonly used and stronger than mortise and tenon. And when it comes to making mortise and tenon, I cheat by using the Fez tool domino. It's a very expensive single use tool. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make mortise and tenon joints by using the most versatile tools in the workshop, a plunge router and table saw. So what type of router do you need? Well, a plunge router is best and the size of the router isn't that important. Really just depends on what size mortises you're gonna be making and how quickly you wanna make them. Uh, you will need an edge guide for it and unfortunately I don't have one for my trim router. So I'll put that aside for now. Now you will need an edge guide. This is our reference for where the mortise is actually gonna go. Most routers will come with some form of edge guide and if they don't, they're usually available as an accessory or there are some third party ones you can buy or you can even make your own. I won't cover that today as as a little bit outside the scope. Next up is bit selection. There are a few things to look at here. One is the width of the bit. That defines the minimum width of our mortise. We can always make multiple passes to make it wider, but we can't go any narrower than that. The style of the bit is also pretty important. For best results, use a spiral upcut bit. The spiral upcut bit will help remove the material from the mortise, as in all the dust will come out of the hole easier than a spiral downcut bit. Spiral bits do tend to cut a lot better because their cutter extends all the way across the face of the bit or the end of the bit, so they can actually plunge very well. Now spiral bits like this are pretty expensive, but in my opinion, they are worth it and they do last quite some time. The contrast to that is your standard straight bit. These are very inexpensive, available in a wide variety of sizes. The problem with these type of bits is that they don't typically have a cutter on the end. With no cutter on the end, they can't plunge all that well. There are ways around that. You can drill out the, where the center section would be, you can make multiple very shallow passes and work your way down, uh, drill an entry hole, that sort of thing. I'm not gonna be covering these today because it's more the general technique rather than how to work around specific bits. There are, however, some straight bits that have a cutter on the bottom. They're sometimes known as bunging straight bits or mortising straight bits or flat bottom cutter straight bits. I'll have a link to a few of those in the description below. They, as the name implies, have a straight cutter on the end of it, so they are suitable for plunging or mortising operations. They're a little bit more expensive than a straight cutter, but they're nowhere near as expensive as a spiral upcut bit. For this demo, I'm gonna be mortising this piece into this piece. I'm gonna use a 3 8 inch spiral upcut bit. I've got my center line here, which is what I've centered my edge guide on my router onto. This is my start line, this is my stop line. I'll plunge at full depth for those two bits and then work my way through the rest. So that creates a very clean mortise. The reason for plunging to full depth at the start and stop points is it creates a good physical reference point. You can feel the router uh, struggling less when you get to the start and stop points so that you're not overshooting every time. Nearly all plunge routers will come with some sort of turret system, utilizing that to set the different depths at which you can plunge at will really make it quite a simple and quick process as well as not overloading your bit so you don't end up with excess chatter or burning or tear out or anything like that. For cutting tenons on the table saw, the quickest way is with a dado stack. Now you don't have to have a dado stack, it just goes a lot quicker when you're cutting half inch at a time versus an eighth inch at a time. You don't have to use a crosscut sled, but I find crosscut sled is much easier. This allows me to have a replaceable insert with zero clearance for my data stack, so it's very easy to line everything up by eye. If you'd like to make a crosscut sled like this, link in the description below. If you don't have a data stack, be it because you don't have one or because your table saw doesn't handle it, all these techniques will work on the router table as well, using a straight bit and a miter gauge. I've got three marks here. One is the center line and the other two are the outside jigs of the tenon. So I'm gonna very carefully set my dado stack to be slightly underneath that. 
I'm gonna do some test cuts, see whether that fits or not. It turns out I didn't carefully set the height of the dado stack and the fit was rather loose. I had to lower the dado stack, cut another test cut, and after confirmation could cut the rest. When cutting the shoulders, I lowered the dado stack a little bit more. Now with that all cut, it actually doesn't fit because we've got the classic square peg round hole problem. The router bit is round so the ends of the mortise are rounded. Dado stack creates a nice square tenon. So there are two ways you can do this. You can square up the tenon using a chisel or you can round the uh, tenons. I typically prefer to round the tenons. I find that just a little bit less work. As for rounding these, there's a bunch of different ways you can do that. Sandpaper, uh, if you've got a belt sander, chisel to just pare down an approximate round, or you can use rasps. I tend to like rasps because they work very quickly. So that's how I make mortise and tenon joinery when I'm not using the domino. When would I not use the domino? Well, when I'm doing big furniture. The domino I have is the DF500, it's the small one. The largest mortises it can make are 10 millimeters wide by, I think it's 25 millimeters deep. While that allows a fair bit of strength, if you're talking about a dining table, sometimes you're gonna want a much larger joint than that. And you can certainly stack multiple dominoes together and get more strength that way, but when you're talking larger furniture, you're gonna want deeper mortises. For me, this method works fantastic. It's repeatable. Using the crosscut sled rather than a miter gauge means that I can handle much larger stock. And there are many, many other ways to make mortise and tenon joints. There are hollow chisel mortises, another single purpose tool. There are panter routers, horizontal boring machines, or you can cut them by hand. The point of this video is not to show you all the techniques, but to show you at least one with general purpose tools that most people are gonna have if they've got a power tool based workshop so that I feel less guilt when I use the domino and I can point people to watch this video so they can see alternative techniques. Thanks for watching.